God is unique. What does that mean? It means there is no one else like God. There are things that God does that only God can do. There are things that God does that none of you ever did or will ever do. Now I'm going to mention one of those unique things that only God has done. Are you ready? God picked out his own mother. <laughs> Raise your hand if you did that. He's the only one who ever did it. And when he picked out that woman to be his mother, he looked through all of history, all the billions of women who have lived, who live, or the who knows how many billion more that will be walking this earth. And what a woman he picked. When Gabriel, the great archangel, found himself in the presence of that woman of women, there's only one thing the archangel could do, and that was to sing out her praises, to say, Hail, woman, full of grace, the Lord is with you. You are the woman who has found favor with God. Now, there was another great woman, great woman. Her name was Elizabeth. And when that fine woman found herself being visited by Mary, she had to imitate Gabriel. And she had to do the same thing. Sing out her praises, saying, blessed are you among all women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should visit me? Blessed are you, woman who trusted God. Now, third person. Now, this third person isn't even born yet. But when Mary comes into this house, he has to imitate the angel and his mother, and he starts jumping up and down, singing in that way the praises of this extraordinary woman. Hey, Mom! That's her! So what's wrong now, ending our retreat, if we follow the example and also imitate the archangel, imitate St. Elizabeth and John the Baptist, and sing out the praises of Mary? If we say she's special, there's only one reason why we do it, because she is special. When we had the first worldwide retreat for priests, this great bishop from India, Valerian de Souza, spoke about Mary. And he said some other Christians think we exaggerate in the praise that we give Mary, in all of the big titles we give Mary. And he said, well, if they think we exaggerate, they should take their complaint to Jesus because he's the one who gave Mary her greatest title. For 33 years, he walked around this world calling that woman my mother. And there's no greater title than Mary has, mother of Jesus. Mother of the Savior, of the Messiah, Mother of God. So, where's the problem? 
if like the angel, like Elizabeth, like John the Baptist, and like Jesus, we sing her praises. I was in a dialogue once, ecumenical dialogue, a good one, lovely people. And we were good friends. I think they even liked me, even though I was a Catholic priest. <laughs> we got along fine. One day, sympathetically, they said to me, feeling sorry for me, but Father, what are you going to do about the problem of Mary? I said, that's an interesting question. Let me ask you a couple of questions. Can you say this, I love St. Peter? Sure. How about this? I love St. John. Sure, here's an easy one. I love St. Paul. Oh, yeah. I said, I got one more question. Can you say this? I love Mary. No answer. And I said to them, I don't have the problem you do. <laughs> Someday you're going to meet God and you're going to have to explain to him why you think he made a mistake picking out Mary. You're going to meet Jesus and you're going to explain to him why you didn't love his mother. I don't have the problem. You got a big problem. If we talk about her as special, why do we do it? She's the favorite daughter of God the Father. She's the beloved mother of God the Son. She's the gorgeous bride of God the Holy Spirit. Of course she is special. Once in Ireland, I'm Irish. Any Irish here? Yeah, you like to fight. <laughs> That's us. We love arguments. All right, this Irishman, a Catholic, is arguing with this other Irishman, a Protestant, about Mary. Finally, the Protestant guy gets really angry. And he screams at the Catholic, what's so special about Mary? She's just another woman, like my own mother. And the Irish Catholic says to him, yeah, you're right. She's just another woman like your mother. But there sure is a big difference in the two sons. <laughs> so we skip the arguments. And we just do what an angel told Joseph to do. And we Catholics do it, and do it well. And what that angel told Joseph is, don't hesitate to take Mary into your home. And that's what we do. All right now, Mary is not just the mother of God. By God's will, by God's plan, she is our mother, too. Now, again, some of our dear, and they are beloved, dear uh, Protestant brothers, uh, they would say, no, uh, Jesus gave Mary to John. Mm, 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 mm. Anything, everything that Jesus had that was giveable, his name, his father, his spirit, clothes off his back, last drop of his blood, his inheritance, everything, his title as child of God. He gave it all to every one of us. And of course, if he gave Mary to John, he gave her to every one of us. We're the family of God. It has a father, has a big brother, has a family spirit, no mother. Of course it has a mother. Mother of us all, Mary, mother of God. Special model. All the things that Mary taught, 
she exem uh, exemplified uh, that Jesus taught are exemplified in the life of Mary. I always emphasize there her faith, her faith. Now, Jesus said in three days, no, I'm going to die, I'm going to Jerusalem, and there I'm going to die for you. On the third day, I'll rise from the dead. Who believed it? Did those women on Easter morning carrying oil to the tomb to anoint a dead body? Did they believe it? Did Peter believe it? Did John believe it? Did any of the apostles believe it? Only one believed that promise, and that one was Mary. So she's at the foot of the cross. She's there in the tomb laying her son's body there. But when those women three days later carry the oils to anoint the dead Christ, Mary's not there. So I speculate. You don't have to believe this one. It's an opinion of mine. If she wasn't there with the other women, where was she? Well, you remember that girl died, was dead for three hours, and Jesus brought her back to life, and he said to the parents, the kid's been dead for three hours, hungry, get her something to eat. So where was Mary? In the kitchen. <laughs> and her son walks in, and she says, son, you've been dead for three days. You must be hungry. I have breakfast ready. I'm not saying that really happened, but that is the way Mary believed. And only Mary believed that way. She was perfect in every virtue, and no one else except possibly that John the Baptist had that level of perfection. Now, she is special inter intercessor. And some again say, what do you need her for? Go straight to Jesus. But then they get on the radio and say, send me a letter and put a dollar in it, and I'll intercede for you. Why don't I keep the dollar and go straight to Jesus? <laughs> and then they say, yeah, uh, uh, that, okay, fine. But the dead can't intercede. And then I say, whoops, you goofed. Who's dead? Didn't Jesus say, those who believe in me will never die? Jesus, Mary, is more alive than any one of us. So let's get her help. And she is a great help. Father Peyton, he was called a rosary priest, told this story. He made it up, of course, but it's a nice story. He says Peter goes out for a walk. And along the road, who does he meet? He meets Mary. So he stops, and they talk, because they love each other. They have a lot to talk about. Then... He has to go his way. Mary's going her way. And as they part, Peter says to Mary, Oh, and Mary, when you see Jesus, tell him I love him. And Mary says to Peter, Oh, yes, but Peter, he knows that you love him. And Peter says, Yeah, that's true but he like hearing it from his mom. And Jesus likes to hear about you from Mary. And when Mary puts a word in for you, something happens. Remember that wedding feast. God the Father gives God the Son a program, a schedule. And that schedule is worked out between God the Father and God the Son. And then Mary says four words to Jesus, and she changes the schedule. 
And the four words are, they have no wine. And Jesus gets ahead of himself in working his first miracle. And he can do that for us. Hey, this God of ours. I started off saying, got to tell you about God. What a God. What a divine family. What a God the Father. So powerful. So glorious. What a God the Son, our brother. So loving, so generous. What a God the Holy Spirit so full of graces to carry to us. And what great brothers and sisters. Somebody just this morning said to me, how do you like being in Australia? And I said, hmm. And what I really like is not the country, that's fine, that's good. The people, the Australians my brothers and sisters. So what a father, what a brother, what a spirit, what a family. One more thing, what a mother. Our mother, Mary, who is with us and is helping us. Now, everybody else dies, and when they die, we all give them the same wish. And the wish is, Eternal life, no, eternal rest, grant to them, O Lord, right? And Mary's the only one that doesn't get it. She's not up in heaven resting. She's running all over the place. Lords, Fatima, Medjugorje, Australia, anywhere, everywhere, working lovingly for the salvation and sanctification of all of her children, the children that we are lucky enough to be. So, thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. And one more thing. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very, very much for mothering us so tenderly. And one more thing, Mary. Please, please. When you see Jesus, tell him we love him. And tell him that we love you too. He'll like hearing it from you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How about an applause for that God who gave us marriage?